This week's Parts Plus Motorsports moment, we're in the Bat Cave. We are in the lounge where Mike makes all the tune-up calls and looks at the data after the run. So every run on these nitro cars, there is a data gathering system that monitors basically anything you can think of. And of course, we're not going to show you all of it, but we're going to show you some basics and Mike's going to take you through what happens, what he looks at after a run. Well, the first thing we do is we take the, uh, the data card out of the race pack unit on the race car. This is where the data is stored from the run. So we put this in our card reader and we move to the race pack software and it sees all of the cards that are, are all the runs that are on the card. So we'll, we'll um, ask it to um, make a new run. So we will say, okay. We're going to call this a logger test. Which means you're not seeing a real run. <laughs> well, this is, this is actually a real run. But I'm just not putting it in the same, giving it the same file name that we would. Uh, we get to select the lane. We get to put the reaction time, so on. We get to make comments in here. Then we're able to save the run. The run will be saved. And now we're able to look at all of the things that that go into um, making a run. So what first thing we have to do is we have to find the start. So we we find the start. This blue line is Clay hitting the loud pedal. So we'll we'll call that the start. And now we can see the engine RPM. This is Clay holding down the throttle pedal. So we see engine RPM drive shaft, uh, we can see blower boost, we can see the accelerometer tells us how much acceleration we have and where we have acceleration. We get to look at um, tire temperatures um, going down the racetrack, um, so on and so forth. And those are the basics that go into getting the data up on the screen and then we use other software to analyze the data. So basically every one of these boxes that you have at the top of the screen up there tells something on the car. You can get a lot of data up here on, on the screen at one time. So we can be looking at timing, we can be looking at the clutch linear, we can um, look at our, our fuel system pressure map that we use to control the fuel pressure regulator um, we can look at ignition phasing, the two mags. We monitor to make sure that the two mags are set to the same internal timing as the external timing that controls when the spark actually uh, comes through the plug wires. And we have uh, several different channels to look at the ignition uh, because the ignition is a very important element of what we do. So we um, we have a lot of capability in, in monitoring the ignition. There's also a number of math channels that are up here on the screen, and that would be doing things like um, looking at the at the boost versus the engine RPM. Um, the the boost at 8,000 RPM, so you have a constant RPM number, and so there's a lot of math behind um, the uh, boost at 8,000. Uh, we get to look at basic things like oil pressure, the oil pressure on the run, and uh, more MSD monitoring. And we also get to monitor our air regulators, and there are eight exhaust gas temperatures. The, all of these channels get looked at on, on every run. So as you can see, you can get an awful lot of stuff on the screen. So I can tell y'all when, when I come up here, I've done this over 20 years, Mike and I have done this a lot together, and I'll come in here and, and see this. While yes, I understand some of it, but I'm gonna show y'all what I like to look at. So Mike, if you could clear that screen. What I like to look at, engine RPM. Let's click that up there. I, I certainly like seeing the engine RPM because I understand that. And I like to look at the drive shaft. But the main thing that I always like to look at is the fun meter. 
that's the G meter. What, what did I feel? How did the car accelerate? Those are the, when I come up here to look at this, those are the three things that I always look at. And occasionally I will put up the throttle. And the reason I may look at that, and where is the throttle on this? There it is. You're right, right, here. right. And occasionally I'll look at that because if we shake the tires and I have to pedal it, you know, I want to see how quickly I, I did, whether I did good or bad. So the green line there is the drive shaft, so that is how fast the rear tires are going. And then there are times where we'll put the, uh, the front wheel up. And the reason we'll sometimes look at the front wheel because the rear tires on these things can spin all the way down the racetrack. So there are times we'll use the front wheel because once the car's moving and the front end's not off the ground, we know if the rear tires are lying to us. But for me, those are the basic things that I look at because, you know, it's, it's when I hit the throttle, how high the engine RPM went, but especially the G-meter. The G-meter tells you how the car was accelerating. And I can tell Mike what I felt in the car a lot of times, and then we can compare it to this. The majority of the time, this is always right, but there are times where I, I can tell Mike things that I felt because he'll tell you the uh, the old human body still reacts faster than the timing system. And what kind of rate are, is this thing measuring in? So the uh, race pack is measuring 100 samples per second. So that's that's a, that's a lot of data, um, and you know we get a permanent record, you know, from this. But like Clay was alluding to, the the human is a much more sensitive instrument than race pack. But the human can also make things up. The longer it has time to think about it, especially when you make a mistake, you know, you'll, your mind will start trying to figure out uh, what did I do or what did I not do and how was that not my fault? But this will, this will make you uh, say, oh, yeah, yeah, that is what I did. But there are times where I can tell Mike if it spun the tires, I can give him a little bit of information like it was really close to making it and we've made enough runs together. He, he will use that information that what I felt, you know, if I feel like we could accelerate the car harder in certain spots, you know, we'll try to use that. But back to the G-meter, so the initial hit of the throttle, we kind of use that. And you can see right here where the engine RPM comes down a little bit. That's where Mike is changing the timing because we want to slip the tire early in the run, but then we got to catch it. And, and that's part of what Mike does with the timing. And and then it gets really fun. You know, I have people all the time talk about, man, I just want to get in there and, and, you know, feel what that's like to hit the throttle. Well, yes, it's incredible. That's a lot of Gs when you first take off. But out here, down the racetrack, the acceleration is even greater. It is uh, by far the ultimate roller coaster ride. Have done a lot of cool things and have never felt anything like it. It's, it's over six Gs. Yeah, over six Gs. And for as fun as that is, you know, we all watch that. The crew watches it. A lot of times for us, is the, uh, the not so fun G meter is when the uh, parachutes come out at the other end of the racetrack because it quickly goes from going really fast to uh, really, really slowing down. Positive Gs won't hurt you. Negative Gs are bad for you, that's for sure. So there, with the probably hitting the parachutes, it's uh, minus two Gs. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. But folks, there is infinite number of things we can show you here. Hopefully this little basic rundown kind of gives you an idea of what the crew chiefs are looking at. And as always, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll do more.